Hello everyone and welcome to the Hippie Geeks. Do you need better lighting for your videos but you don't want to break the bank? I know that I certainly do and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a cheap, durable, upgradable lighting softbox. Here are the tools and materials you will need. The first thing is going to be a white 5 gallon bucket. These only cost about $3.50 new and you may already have one laying around. The next item you will need is a tripod. I picked up a couple of these at a local thrift store for $5 each, and again you may have one laying around that you can use. An X-Acto knife to clean up the holes you will be making in the bucket. As always, my Leatherman. If you do not have one, you will need a pocket knife, cutting pliers, and a screwdriver to take its place. A ceramic ceiling light socket. A 15 foot two-prong extension cord. This is another one that you may have laying around, however we will be cutting off one end, so be sure it isn't one you're going to miss later. Two number 6-32 bolts that are 1.5 inches long. You can get away with shorter, but the extra length makes it easier to get them in the holes later. Yes I said it, now get your mind out of the gutter. Two number 6 washers to stop the nuts from being pulled through the bucket, and two number 6-32 nuts. This is the hardware that will keep all of the lights from falling out of the bucket. A 1 quarter inch dash 20 wing nut. This is the threading that most tripod camera screws use, and this will allow us to attach the light to the tripod without destroying it or making the marriage permanent. One washer with a 1 quarter inch hole that is 1 and 5 eighths inches wide. This will go between the wing nut and the bucket to give the connection extra stability. These next parts are optional depending on the wattage you want your softbox to produce. You can just screw in a single 100 watt bulb and your softbox is ready to go. However, if you add one splitter and an additional bulb, you have doubled your light output. Beyond that, you can place another splitter into each of the openings on the first splitter with a bulb for each and you have a 400 watt fixture. With that said, you will also need enough 100 watt bulbs to fill the sockets you are using. Step 1. Removing the handle. Personally, I do not want the handle flopping around when I'm positioning the light, so I'm going to simply remove it now. The first side will be the hardest, but with a little work it should pop out. After that, it's a simple matter of removing the other side. Set the handle aside, as it will likely come in handy on another project. Step 2. Making the holes. The first hole we will be making is where the bucket connects to the tripod. You want the hole to be fairly centered on the bucket, and I chose the center of the picture of the drowning baby. This will make sure that when it is fully assembled, it is by the tripod, making for a much cleaner look. For this portion, you could easily use a drill to make all of the required holes. However, as a person on a tight budget, you may not have access to a drill, but since the bucket is made of a soft plastic, it is very easy to make all of your holes with a pocket knife. The key is to use firm but gentle pressure. You're not trying to stab through the bucket, you are twisting the knife around and around while pushing in, allowing the blade to act like a drill bit and push the plastic aside. With this hole, you want to make it large enough that the 1 quarter inch bolt from the tripod can push through. As there will be a washer on one side and the tripod base on the other, it's fine for the hole to be a little larger than necessary. With each of the holes we make, you want to take the X-Acto knife and clean up the edges. With any hole that will have a bolt go through it, it's very important that the surface be as flat as possible, and also makes for a much cleaner look. Next we are going to put some vent holes into the top and bottom along the back edge of the bucket. 400 watts of light bulbs will put out a considerable amount of heat, even with the CFLs that we will be using. A few vent holes will allow for air transfer into and out of the softbox, keeping everything from reaching too high of temps if you tape some wax paper on the front of the project, as I will be. Remember to use a firm, gentle pressure, take your time, and please don't cut a finger off. Now we are going to make the holes that will connect the light socket to the bucket itself. Measure the distance between the two holes closest to the socket. This should be a standard size of 2 and 1 16th inches, but double check on yours just in case. Now grab the bucket and mark two spots half the distance that you measured on opposite sides of the center point of the bucket. In my case that is 1 and 1 32nd inches. This will assure that our fixture will be centered in the bucket. For these holes, you want them to be very close to the size of the number 6-32 bolts we will be using, so don't go crazy when making the holes. There is one more hole we need to make for the extension cord to come through, but that will be done a little later in the process. Step 3. 
getting the cord ready. This is the part where we cut the poor, defenseless end off of the extension cord. Once the end is off, split the two insulated wires apart and then strip about an inch of insulation off of each one. Now, set the ceramic light socket in front of you with the electrical connections facing up and take the bare wires on the extension cord and curve them into hooks. You can see on this socket there are actually two screws for each wire connected by a metal plate. Do not connect both of the extension cord wires so that they will be on the same metal plate. At best, that will blow a breaker when you plug it in, and at worst, it will create a spark and melt your beautiful light, not to mention possibly burning your entire house down. Wrap one wire around your first screw and tighten it down. Take the remaining wire and wrap it around one of the other screws and tighten that one down. This is where we make that final hole I mentioned earlier. Grab the bucket and set the ceramic light fixture on top of it. Now that we know how the cord will be connected, we can place the hole for it to run out of. Place the light fixture oriented so the small holes we placed are parallel with the two holes in the fixture that match it. Note where the extension cord wire appears that it will be able to pop out and place a new hole there. Now, when you push too hard, especially on the bottom of the bucket, this is what can happen. A crack isn't the end of the world, but it could have been completely avoided if I had simply not pressed as hard. Picking up after my mistake, I will simply finish with the hole and clean it up. It will not be as easy or look as clean as it could have, but it doesn't ruin the project, and I'm glad that I could show what happens when you press too hard so that you know not to make the same mistake. Step 4. Assemble the softbox. We are almost finished. Grab the light fixture and remove the wiring from it, making sure to remember how you placed it on there. Now grab the bucket and feed the cord through from the bottom into the bucket and then out onto your work surface so that it can be rewired. Again, form the exposed wire into hooks and secure it to the light fixture the same way you had before. Grab the two number 6-32 bolts and slide them into the holes on the front of the light fixture. Holding the bolts in place, slide the whole assembly into the bucket and slide the two bolts through the small holes in the bottom of the bucket. I was not able to show this very well due to the fact that I had to be able to look to see what I was doing, but I think you get the point. Now, watch me fumble as I place the number 6 washers onto the bolts. After that, use one of the number 6-32 nuts on each of the bolts and tighten them as much as you can with your fingers. Holding onto the nut with your fingers or the pair of pliers, use your screwdriver on the inside to tighten down the bolts all the way. Once they are tightened up, this is what yours should look like. Well, not quite like this. Hopefully yours will be missing the crack on the bottom of the bucket. Step 5. Attach the light to the tripod. Here is the bolt that we will be attaching the light to. And here is the hole it will be going into. Now grab the 1 quarter inch washer and wing nut. The order of assembly is the tripod bolt goes into the bucket, the washer then goes onto the bolt, and the wing nut gets screwed on tightly after that, which will secure everything nicely in place. As I am trying to do this so the camera can see it, there is quite a bit of fumbling going on. I promise that when you do this standing up and everything is in place, it is much easier to get the threading started. Once you do get it going, make sure to rotate the light and tripod into the proper alignment before tightening it down all the way. You are finished! For the most part anyways. If you're doing this on the cheap, screw in your single light bulb and you're done. If you're using the splitters, screw them in and then the light bulbs. If you do the 400 watt version like I have, your end result will be something like this. The final step is to take some wax paper and tape it over the front. Here is the completed light. I actually made two of them. The first one is on the left and was used to create this video. Don't mind the mess, I'm still getting my workbench in the garage set up to do these videos on. And here is the light in action. It is very stable for how cheap it was to make, and easily adjustable. Finally, here is what one of our wine bottle tiki torch lamps looks like under the lights. I couldn't be happier with how these lights turned out, and I would love to hear about your experience making them in the comments below. If this is your first time here on the Hippie Geeks, it would be wonderful to have you subscribe. This channel is all about helping you unleash your life and create a world that you love. Creating something yourself is an amazing way to not only help out your wallet and the planet, it feels great to be able to do it. Subscribe, check out some of our other videos, and come back every Wednesday for fresh content. Thanks again, and we'll see you on the next one.